Thank you. Well, it's a critical question because two of the really most focused service delivery rates that the government has is public safety, if you're not safe, everything else doesn't work, and the education of our future our children. Now, then we have an opportunity to grow and compete here. I chaired education for three years in the state senate when we did a tremendous amount of reform, including charter schools and other efforts. Every year I was there, we not only cut taxes to help our economic activity, but we invested more in education. We can do that with even limited resources being out of the how we focus to deliver. So, for example, I had to meet with the chancellors and the president and say, how can I help you control your costs? One president said to me, if the Jets were able to increase the hours that a professor is in the classroom with the students, which is really where we want to be, not necessarily have a TA in it, that it could reduce the cost millions and millions of dollars. So if you begin to look at really systemic solutions all across the board, in education and elsewhere, we're going to be able to drive those costs down and better deliver the service that we're, we're focusing on. We can do those things. We've done those things. But it's also important to, to as, as Pete mentioned, to be able to explain for businesses and educational endeavors, this is the place where the public will partner. If you want to do a research project here, we're going to create an opportunity for businesses to take that product to market right here in the state of Michigan because we're going to make Michigan business friendly both in tax and regulation. That will inform all of those questions you asked about. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I believe your question was about funding in higher education. And I'm a product of Michigan's higher education system. I grew up in inner city. I'm the oldest of seven children. I didn't do it, except I had the opportunity to attend University of Michigan Flint, and then attend University of Michigan Medical School in an hour, of which I'm a graduate. What a great opportunity for an inner city child from an average background to be up here because of that education. We need to keep that door open for my children and your children. Why can't we fund education like we should? Why is more money going to other departments? Under previous Republican governors, Milliken and Engler, education was always the top priority in the state's budget, always. But for the last three years, if you look at our budget, the biggest single piece is health care. Health care costs are taking money away from what we should invest in. Education, fixing our roads, public safety. You're not going to be able to give $2 billion in tax cuts and still fund education unless you look at the fundamental problem, and that is health care costs gone awry, bankrupting our state. Money for education can only come from correcting health care costs for Medicaid recipients and for state employees. That remains the key to turn the mission around and funding education properly. And uh, for the last uh, answer on round six, uh, those who are excited about that. I've been the fortunate one here to actually be the one that's created companies out of university technology, out of these wonderful institutions. I'm the fortunate one here that's been able to hire the brilliant young people in this state. And it's an exciting opportunity. One of the core assets of our state are our higher ed institutions. The new big three in Michigan will be the three major research universities. And then you add in Grand Valley, Congressman Buckster mentioned, Michigan Tech, all the other great schools. So we do need to invest in them. We need to get them more engaged in our economy, helping with our K-12 system and our economic upside. The bigger short-term question is not the institutions themselves, though, and just higher ed. The problem is the youth we're losing today from these existing institutions. I have two kids in college now. I'm afraid they're not going to have a job in the state. That's the time I'm here on the campaign trail for people. We have great institutions, but we need to reinvent Michigan's economy to make it competitive, to get that open for business sign out, let small business flourish, let entrepreneurs and innovators create new companies, and attract companies here to keep those wonderful young people that we have working in Michigan and having a career in Michigan. Thank you. Uh, Tom George has exercised his right for a 30-second challenge.
Thank you. Fixing Michigan involves fixing health care. It involves giving our inner city tools to turn around dilapidated properties. It involves fixing our budget process. It involves energy policy that is not dependent solely on the weather. Go to my website, georgeforgovernor.com, and read about my plan, Fix Michigan. I need you on my team, and together, let's fix Michigan. Thank you. All right, now we have, we have a whole uh, academic level. Mike, you're trying to explain it for a second. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. I figure out what the heck. You know, this is going to take somebody that can move this process and understands how to make it work. So I've been in the legislature when it worked, but we know how to do that. I've also signed the front of the checks and the back of the checks. I've been a small business owner, so I know how that affects every small business in the state. I've written laws and enforced laws. I've seen this from all sides and I know how to make it work and I will tell you, the NABC talked about this, it's not sustainable. I'm going to follow up on that. Oakland County just recently uh, had 1,200 jobs, 1,400 jobs saved by the governor. And the lieutenant governor said, look, man, right. we're glad those jobs are in Oakland County, no question. But the government map ignored the fact that that day 3,200 jobs left. And it cost us almost a billion dollars in subsidies. That is not sustainable for the future. To lose two thirds of the job and spend a billion dollars. That's how we can systemic reform. You gotta go out and have a rule. <laughs> thank, thank you, Brooks. You do have a bell on my head at the time, but I have a plan for mission. It focuses at whitecox2010.com, focuses on this. Are we going to do a slow walk to mediocrity, or are we going to stand up and roar once again? Are we going to be the state that brought our parents, our grandparents here, or are we, we going to settle for a long, slow slide uh, like it's happened in so many other states? It's time for us to stand up. Uh, that's what this campaign is about. It's about ideas and leadership. Go to my website and you'll learn all about it. And it's not fluff. Thank you very much. The issue here is about a broken economy and a broken government. And when you're looking at the candidates here, ask the question not who you like the most, who you've known the longest, but who's the most qualified. I'm the person bringing real world experience to the table that knows how to run a company and make things happen. I've spent my entire life doing challenges people didn't think people could do. Graduating from the U of M with three degrees at 23. Running a Fortune 500 company when I was in my 30s. Bringing $200 million in venture capital to the state of Michigan in the 90s. Building startups from scratch, making real things that change the world. Companies like Health Media that's revolutionizing wellness and disease management. I'm excited, I've done it before, and I'm ready to do it again with you. Thank you. Making us more efficient and effective. 